guys, I'm Evan Espet, a streamography player. You're watching Gareth Mason on Walking Tour with G-Man. What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Today's video is all about England and the Saracens. Obviously Saracens are double champions. They won the Gallagher Premiership Cup as well as the um, Champions Cup, which is truly outstanding, really leading from the front and showing dominance in European rugby. Which brings me to the topic, are England now favourites for the World Cup? We can't write them off. There's definitely a lot of improvement there, showing a lot of skill and talent within the English squads. I mean, there's a lot of competitive rugby. If we look at this, that final, it was very, very close between Exeter Chiefs and Saracens. Saracens obviously also winning the Champions Cup by beating the defending champions of last year, which were Leinster, which is absolutely massive to show how far England rugby have come. I mean, if we look back last year's Six Nations, it wasn't the greatest time for England. I mean, they were fifth on the log, weren't in a great place after being pretty much one of the dominant teams in the um, Northern Hemisphere about two years ago. So to have come back from that is really remarkable. And we saw it in the Six Nations. They definitely showed improvement um, and, and the skill level there and the intensity was there. Then England 15 played against the Barbarians and they picked up a victory, showing the hope for the younger English rugby players, which is great to see. It's what I think the fans or English fans would want to see from a development point of view, from a growth point of view. Um, and it gives Eddie Jones a whole other level of decision of when to decide who he's going to pick in his team. I mean, if we look at uh, Venipolas, I mean, those brothers are absolutely outstanding. I know one is injured. Hopefully he's back in time um, in order for the World Cup. You've got, I mean, Owen Farrell really has been a true leader and example in both Saracen's victories and I think he's going to be the key for England going forward in this Rugby World Cup. If he can keep on that level of intensity in the form that he's in, England could go far and um, they really have the opportunity and the, uh, uh, and the players to go to that next level and put up that competitiveness that they want to provide. I mean, if we look at where Ireland were this time last year, they Six Nations, they destroyed then they won the Pro 14 as well as the Champions Cup. Then they went on to beat New Zealand. Now if we look at England, fine, they didn't win the the Six Nations, but they're just going to won their Premiership as well as the Champions Cup. So that the Champions of Europe, as well as of their pre Premiership, be it, it is in England, but still the Champions of Europe, showed a lot of class and, and improvement. Surely they should be contenders now because they're the champs of Europe. So that's why I did this video last week about Saracens versus Crusaders to see who the best of these two teams could be. Would it be Crusaders or would it be Saracens? Um, and a lot of people were mixed emotions there. I still reckon it will be a tough game. And um, Crusaders' level of intensity is pretty strong. Um, but you can't cut out Saracens. They've really, really done well. And congratulations to them on achieving this milestone of becoming the double champions. So... It just brings it up to thinking about this Rugby World Cup. Um, I've said it a few times. I think this is going to be the most competitive Rugby World Cup we've seen in many, many years. I mean, we're talking... I mean, yes, New Zealand are going in as the absolute favourites. Of course they are. They're two-time or three-time champs trying to make it a hat-trick um, of World Cup wins, which is absolutely outstanding. What they've achieved up till now is remarkable. But then you've got Wales, who won the Six Nations. You cannot write them off. Also shown a lot of improvement and come, have come such a long way. You've got Ireland, who, yes, um, haven't had the greatest year this year, but still, they were dominant last year, and they just get a few injuries back and get their mindset right. To me, that can j be just as effective. I mean, the depth within Ireland is remarkable. Then we go back to the Southern Hemisphere. You've got Argentina, who are dark horses. They've always been around and spoiled a lot of parties for teams like Ireland in a semi-final. So you can't write them out. And now Argentina are bringing back their European rugby players. So Sherbert, sure, they are developing something special. And I'm very curious to, 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 to see how it goes. I mean, the Jaguars in Super Rugby are um, top of South Africa's conference. So they're really looking good. So we cannot count out Argentina. Then we go to the, my home country, South Africa. You know, I still believe you can't write them off. That the the, the, the they're building a 
uh, a very good squad. Um, and the depth within is, is improving and showing a lot of class. Yes, Super Rugby teams are up and down, but I'm impressed with what I'm seeing. And we too have players overseas um, who can really shine for South Africa. We've got a few in, in, in the Saracens. We've got a few all over the Gallagher Premiership team. So you can't ride out South Africa. Australia, maybe. You know, they, they've been in a very tough situation at the moment, especially in the media. But again, they show up on the day. They can spoil parties. Then you've got France, Scotland, and all those other nations who can just come out from behind and destroy a party, which allows a team like England, Wales, South Africa, France, whoever, do, do maybe come up from nowhere and pick up a victory. So it, it, it just shows the potential of what we're going to witness in this Rugby World Cup and how it's going to be absolutely exciting to watch because the predictions are going to be impossible because I just think it's going to be so close. But therefore, back to England. I mean, you've got players who they're talking about, like this Cipriani guy, this, this talk of his form, of how good it was in the Premiership, but now maybe Eddie Jones won't even pick him. The, 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 the depth within England is pretty good at the moment, and I think it could be quite surprising to see what Eddie Jones comes up with. And therefore, going on the man himself, he is not an idiot. He's been in this business for a long time. We've seen him pull out miracles from teams, Japan Springboks. We've seen him in a, a very high point of his England, England coaching career where England were dominant. Maybe they peaked too soon and then they, they flopped a bit. And when everyone was calling for him to go and to be sacked and all that stuff, he kept it calm, he kept it cool and stuck it with England. And now we're seeing England on the rise again. So we cannot count out this country. Um, this World Cup, it's anyone's game. It really is. Yes, you've got New Zealand as favourites. But anyone who wants to show up on this game, on this day and on the, at the game, can really prove a point and shine for their respective nation. So we cannot count them out. I mean, for example, look at the Cricket World Cup. What a bowls up in certain ways it is for South Africa. They've just lost to Bangladesh and England. But now, as I'm recording, England are having a tough time with Pakistan. So it's, it's when it comes to World Cup finals and a World Cup, every nation treats this as equal because they believe, whether they bottom ranked or top ranked, they believe that they can pick up a victory. Japan, South Africa again. No one in, no one thought that was going to happen. No one predicted it. But when Japan beat us, my word, now we're talking, teams can surprise us. You can never write off a nation. Look, Japan won't win the Rugby World Cup, but they can definitely spoil a party, and I really hope they do. So South Africa and Japan game can be moved aside. We talk about a new team <laughs> that gets beaten by them. But um, what a tournament is going to be, and um, I really believe you, we need to watch out for England, especially if you don't support them, um, because I think they're going to come in all house blazing and really go on the tack. And Owen Farrell, I mean, the quality within that man to, alone is, is frightening, um, and I really reckon he's going to be a strong leader contender. I don't know if Hartley's going to be a co-captain if he's back from injury, but for me, I'll put Owen Farrell leader all the way then take that team to the next level. He's a great, great athlete. Um, I see his shoulder tackle was allowed. It's now been proven as an example of how you should tackle. So, yeah, World Rugby conf confused me a little bit there. But anyway, I think what will be will be. But um, Owen Farrell at the helm of an English squad that are looking good could be very dangerous and um, could make for an exciting World Cup filled with a lot of surprises and I really think we're going to see something special and unique out of this World Cup. Do I think New Zealand's going to win? Yeah, they're favourites, but I, th I won't be surprised if we have a new crown champion and um, I'm excited to see what level of intensity is going to come and we're going to see it before the World Cup because I think um, the Northern Hemisphere teams are playing like a summer tour thing. So that's going to be interesting to see how those how the, the country is playing against one another because it's like a mini Six Nations. So I'm very curious to see how that goes and, and what that has to bring to the table and if we could see improvements and strategies and maybe game plans of how England are going to go about this Rugby World Cup. But one thing's for sure, I'm not writing them off. I'm putting them on 
the the list as potential um, winners because you got your, your European champions. You had a very strong Premiership. Come on, you can't write them off. And I think if you do write them off, you're silly uh, because you just can't. Anyone can win a World Cup, and therefore that's why I'm throwing England into this. It's going to be epic. It's going to be epic World Cup, and I can't wait. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you agree or do you disagree? Am I talking a lot of rubbish in England? I'm going to get smashed out in the first group stage. I don't think so. But hey, it is World Cup. Anything can happen. Japan, South Africa. That's going to do it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you are new. And make sure you turn on that bell notification so you are notified for all future uploads. So much more to come. World Cup season's getting closer. So leave your thoughts if you wanted me to talk about specific international rugby topics as we approach this World Cup. Lots to come. Stay safe. Never give up. Cheers. Make sure you subscribe to his channel for all rugby content. Stay safe and never give up.